Well, uh, my earlier video ended with something called concurrent uses. So I thought this is the right time to understand different types of uses when it comes to performance testing. Okay, so as you can see on the slide here, uh, broadly, you know, we can uh, divide the whole number of uses into three, which is one is user base, second one is application users, or some people would like to call this as online users, and, and the third one is concurrent users. By the way, before I go ahead and explain uh, these different types of users, uh, this is typically an interview question, um, uh, uh, especially if you are going to an interview as a fresher or uh, probably with a one year or two years experience uh, uh, guy. Uh, interviewers would like to ask this, what is user base, what are concurrent users, or do you know any types of users, so they might ask you this question. So. Uh, try to concentrate uh, uh, over here. Uh, I'll try to explain these three things using an example. So we'll go back to the same example we have been using, which is a Gmail application. So you know that there are a lot of people who have registered for Gmail and uh, potentially those are the customers of Gmail. So all over the world, okay, probably there could be uh, uh, 1 billion users, 1 billion people would have registered for Gmail. I don't know, I'm just giving it a guess. So if 1 billion people would have registered for the Gmail all over the world, so this is what is the user base for that application called Gmail, okay? So they are not active right now, but these are all the people who have registered for it and might log in or use this Gmail at some point of time. Okay, so that is what is the user base uh, for this application called Gmail. Okay, so just for just like Gmail, every single application, whether it's a web application or a client-based application or a standalone application, there is a user base for that. Okay, which means that the potential number of users, uh, uh, not potential number of users, they are, they are the users. Okay, of who might potentially log in at some point. So the next thing is the application users or the online users. So these are the users who have logged in, but might not be doing anything actively at that point of time on the application. So right now, my time so shows that it's 6.28. Okay, right now my clock shows that it's 6.28. So at this point of time, Okay, at this point of time, uh, let's say there are 10,000 users who have logged into Gmail. Okay, at 6.28 p.m., there are 10,000 users who have logged into the Gmail application. So these are online users or application users. But uh, keep in mind, guys, the people who have logged in, they might not be actively not doing anything on Gmail application. They would have logged in at the same time they have, they might be doing something else. Okay, they've just logged in and might not be, all of them might not be doing something on that application. Okay, uh, or in other words, uh, all of them might not be sending a user request to the server. Some of them who might not understand what is user request and what is the server, you might have to look at my videos which will come next that's when you will understand this words user request and server better. But at this point of time, uh, I'll not be able to explain the application users without using those jargon, okay? So the people who doesn't understand that, uh, switch to my next videos, watch those videos and come back to this video and again watch this video, okay? Uh, so these application users as I've discussed, there are 10,000 users who are online, who have logged in and not logged out yet. Uh, but all these 10,000 users might not be actively sending the user request to the server. In other words, they have, they have just logged in, but they are not active in the sense they are not doing anything on the Gmail application. So some of them might be uh, browsing Facebook. Some of them, they logged in, but they are browsing Facebook or doing something else. 
and some of them might be sending the request it's not that all the 10000 of them are not active some of them out of the 10000 let's say 2000 3000 they are actively sending the request which means that they are actively using the gmail they are doing something on that gmail application so that's what is online users or application users who have logged in but not logged out yet okay now the concurrent users this is very very important when it comes to performance testing concurrent users are not only the one who have logged in but they are actively sending the request okay at that point of time let's say my clock now shows 628 at 628 how many people are actively sending the request to the server or actively using that gmail application those are concurrent users so when we do the performance testing so we consider the concurrent users okay we consider the user base and application users as well but the most important thing that we consider is the concurrent users i hope you understood this slide well and uh, uh, if there is an interview question i hope you will answer that question now one of the key fact that you would like that you need to understand is number of concurrent users is not same as the number of application users or the online users this is very very important statement guys so if you understood my previous uh, thing uh, you will certainly understand this okay concurrent users are actively on the application not only logged in but using that application which means that they are sending the user request online users or application users are they are logged in they might be sending the request or might not be sending the request that's the difference good luck guys Thank